that you're all in the same journey, that you're all here to learn chemistry <laughs> as a part of, um, amongst other things, of course. And that would be the best analogy for, for soul wounds is that we do usually pick people to be in the same classroom as us because there is some people that are going to help us teach us some of the weak spot that we have in that chemistry class. And some people are just like us and they need to learn and we need to be that lab partner during that time to, to help us, to help each other through it. Welcome to the Cosmic Love Antenna Podcast. This podcast is meant to encourage you to connect within so you can share your light with the world. And now, here's your host, Harrison Ma. Harrison Ma. Harrison Ma. Welcome, beautiful beings, beautiful souls, mystical, powerful, energetic, spiritual beings having a human experience out there in the podcast world. You found yourself here on another episode of the Cosmic Love Antenna here with your host, Harrison, with a returning guest that I'm going to introduce in a second. I'm going to keep it, keep it bubbling, keep you guessing here for a second. If you read the title of the, of the episode, you know, but I want to, I want to build the suspense. As I've been doing here over the last couple of weeks, I want to start with some gratitude. Thank you for joining. Thank you for adding your heart, your your ears, your energy to this growing, expanding podcast. Remember today, if you get some value out of everything we're going to share, if you could share it with a loved one, a friend, a family member, a, a partner that can get some information, I'd appreciate it. Share it out on the social feeds, Instagram, Facebook, Clubhouse, et cetera. And remember, you can leave us a beautiful review over on Spotify or Apple with some of the gems that you got out of this episode. Today, I have by popular demand, mostly my popular demand, but also all of you, all of you love this beautiful being that I have coming on the show today. My, It, it goes back and forth between an episode with myself, an episode with this, with the beautiful Dr. Taggy with the most popular downloads of this show. And I've brought Dr. Taggy back on today to talk about all things soul wounds, soul masks, inner child healing, holistic solutions, and moving from our trauma. So with that, my beautiful friend, welcome back to the Cosmic Love Antenna. Well, thank you for having me back. I'm very happy to be back. On, uh, we were just talking before we started on a, as you transition into your summer day, it's winter here in Australia, but the the energy outside in the environment is seeping into this episode. So we'll try and use, we'll use this weather, we'll use this love to get it going. My friend, <clears throat> I wanted to bring you back on because this is a topic that I know you are very deep into in the, in the work that you do in the world. And we team up on Clubhouse and talk about all things inner child all the time. And this has been a, a discovery for me. I, I've I've known about it and I've heard you speak about it and I've done a little bit of work about it, but the soul wounds and all the elements we're going to sort of weave into it today are, are very powerful and have dropped back into my world to sort of dive deeper into. So I guess today where I want to start with this is maybe we can begin with you defining just exactly what a soul wound is. My pleasure. Well, <clears throat> let me clear my voice. My, my throat chakra is like preparing <laughs> for this talk. And um, a soul wound to me is a, a wound that we, our soul came into this lifetime to heal. So this is opposite to the wounds that may have come from trauma that we usually talk about in inner child. This and this happened in my childhood. Therefore, I have this wound. This, I believe, that's why it's called the soul wound. It's our soul already came with it, with the intention of healing it, which is the key point, with the intention of healing it. So soul wound will be something that we either inherited from a life past lifetime or something that we inherited from our ancestral line, either from a soul wound family, we forget about that ancestral line, or the ancestral line of our biological and physical parents. Either way, it's an energy accumulation, that's how I call it, an energy accumulation that as we were coming, as we were incarnating, we chose to come here to release. And there are five soul wounds. Do you want to do go into that? Well, let's, yeah, let's go there next. And I think, I think that's a beautiful definition of foundation. And I actually have a question bubbling up that I want to ask you before we get into 
the different kinds of wounds. And I also want you to define a mask too, right? Because the mask mm-hmm. is the <clears throat> sort of the counterpart to the mm-hmm. wound. But before we get to that, I'm interested, my friend, because I, you know, I, I've spent a lot of time with you and I know that this, again, like I just said, this is a big part of your work. How, how did this fall into your world? Right. Cause I, for me, I can, I can put some dots together with, you know, the work I've been doing around inner child and my own healing and my, my own connection. But why, why did you find this work so needed to start expressing through your throat chakra? What is it connected to your story connected to maybe some of the needs that you saw were not being met? What, what comes up around that? Well, I think it also comes back to my training. A lot of my training and in French they call us therapists so we do actually have the title of therapist in Europe of a lot of my energy therapist work from an academic perspective has happened in France so I did it with Marie-Hélène Bellard and um, she has introduced me a lot of our training was around sophrology and around Lise Bardot work amongst other things but so it fell into my lap in the sense that it was part of the curriculum of my training. I looked at it and I think at first when I learned it was fascinated, but I also looked at it a lot. It made sense to me in the sense of, oh, there's a coping mechanism and it makes sense. And we can use different names for things. At the end of the day, it's just, it's just a name and it's just about a mechanism. I think when I truly lean into it for me, like I recognized thing, but it was another mo- model. It will really was another modality for me. I didn't um, explain some inner child thing. I didn't get very deep into it until I started connecting the dots between the physical part and the energetic part mm. of my of symptoms for me, but also for my patient. And yeah. I actually went back into her work. Um, and she's her in her soul wound. She does talk a little bit about the physical part. But I was like, okay, how can we make this even bigger? How yeah. can we make this even whole more holistic, not just limiting to the physical appearance, mask and wound? There was a pool, it sounds like. There was a, oh, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah I get this. But then there was a, oh, there's, there's something more to be added in here. Maybe there's some more of my own flavor, my own love, my own expression that I can expand this out. And I think if people listening to this and have heard you speak before, Dr. Taggy, I know I can say, add to this, but other, other people tuning in, they can definitely sense your flavor and your love on top of this topic. So I just, I wanted to ask you that because I, I'm interested in that. I know it can give other people value. So thank you for sharing. I, so let's, so we set the foundation for the, for the wound itself and for me, just to add a bit of my perspective to it, I think how I've been pulled to these sort of wounds and, and, and adding them into the inner child conversation is it's another way that helps us out of the victim mindset, right? I think within the trauma conversation, especially around inner child trauma, we can very easily see that or fall into the trap that, you know, life is happening to me and that these, these challenging, painful experiences you know, the, it's a bit hard to get out of that out of that uh, view. But with these soul wounds now, and maybe you can share your opinion on this, these soul wounds help us stand in our power, right? They help us stand in, oh, there is, not only is there a bigger design here for me, there's a bigger design between the contract I have with my parent. Does that resonate? Oh, yeah, totally. I love that you said the victim part because I, I came, I went into this work, really even energy work, because of how obsessed I am with the question, but why? That root cause obsession. And it gave me such a beautiful answer of that's how much we are in charge. Because even the root cause, when we go from a root cause perspective, we're not a victim to some kind of wound or some kind of trauma. We are so this involving being that are actually always seeking involvement and always seeking to connect back to our, who we are. And we chose this. I think that is so beautiful to me that it ties a beautiful bow on on that whole topic of soul family, but also soul contracts that we are coming here. You're not a victim of your circumstances. You're not a victim of your physical body. You're not a victim of even those wounds 
or the energy that you were accumulated, you are this powerful, powerful being that is completely in charge and you designed this. I know you may not remember now and you may listen to it and you'd be like, a few, there is no way I chose this. And trust me, I've been there. I've been there. And I think that there, it helped me when we go into forgiveness, but it helped me not necessarily forgive certain things, but understand them, that I had so much um, sovereignty. I'm going to go back to that word, being sovereign of my own energy and my own life. And I think that's what the work that we do. And part of it, of course, is the soul wound is going back to the sovereignty of who we are. I think my new, uh, my new favorite word to listen to you say with a French accent is sovereignty. I heard it. That was the, um, uh, beautifully said, <laughs> beautifully said my friend. Uh, <laughs> I would just add to it also the, the wounds and the, the soul contract and soul family perspective of it, it, you took the words out of my mouth, the forgiveness, what we now start to see is that not only do we pick our parents for all the beautiful attributes they have, we pick our parents for the wounds that they have because it's those wounds that are, that will not only help us heal them and support them, but those wounds are there for us too, right? And I think it connects into that unconditionally loving nature of the universe that you know, God says yes. God says yes to the the beauty, and God says yes to the the wound and the pain that is ultimately there to help us expand. Right, both both sides. Oh, of it. absolutely, absolutely. And I think one analogy that came to mind as you were talking, so I'm going to share it. Is picture it as you are choosing. I don't know how is it in Australia, but in the US, at least in college, we choose our classes. So we choose what kind of subject we're going to take, depending on our major, and we pick the teacher, we pick the time. These are choices. And the people that, that are all going to go through pre-med, I'm going to use that example, may probably ch choose Chemistry 101. And depending on what type of experience they want to have through Chemistry 101, they will ch choose a certain teacher. And depending on what kind of time of the day they do prefer, and all of these variables are going to put you in a classroom with different people, with a teacher that you may at some point hate and be like, oh my God, he's so hard with grading. Or why, did, why am I stuck with this person next to me? Or why is this person my lab partner? And you forgot that part of this too, you chose mm -hmm. because it's part of your journey to become whatever you choose to major in. So sometimes take a picture when you're frustrated with the people that you chose to be with and around that you're all in the same journey, that you're all here yep. to learn chemistry <laughs> as a part of, um, amongst other things, of course. And that would be the best analogy for, for soul wounds is that we do usually pick people to be in the same classroom as us because there is some people that are going to help us teach us some of the weak spot that we have in that chemistry class. And some people are just like us and they need to learn and we need to be that lab partner during that time to, to help us, to help each other through it. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a beautiful dance. It's a beautiful dance, and I think we need to come back to the question. You know, instead of what is it, what is going on? Ask yourself, go beyond the what, and ask the why, right? And I think that lands you in that soul contract, soul wound uh, realm. Let's, Doctor Tag, let's go deeper now. So we defined the soul wound. We talked about a bit of the context of it. Now let's define a couple of the other elements that that make up this. Uh, method methodology or perspective or view. So let's now hit on the mask. So what is the mask? The mask is the corresponding element to the wound. So maybe do you want to explain what a mask is in relation to the soul wound that we come into this incarnation with? Yeah, I have such a love and hate relationship with the word mask because to me it's a coping mechanism, but that's how you are seen from the outside. That's why I love that's that's why I love it. I hate it because I think it's confusing, <laughs> but I love it because it is, it forces you to see that's how you're being perceived from the outside. So this is actually a tip as I was, as I am going to start to talk about the full, the soul wound or if you're reading about it or anything like that. If you don't resonate with the wound, see if you resonate with the mask, yeah. see how the people around you yeah. see you. 
if people around you have ever called you a masochist or have called you, you know, control like freak. Um, controlling control freak or called you like, oh, my God, you're always fleeing. Like you're never you're never facing or, you know, you don't like confrontation that actually I think that it's it's my favorite thing to do is actually before we even get started. Um, and I have it recorded that even before starting the workshop is having people write down how they are being seen. And they would start with that first. And yep. then I put it aside and then we do, and I never talk about mask. We do the whole thing, just talking from a little bit from that neuro endocrine system, psycho neuro endocrine system. So I talk about the body. I talk about all of that, talk the inner child at the very, very end. Once I, we, they know what their soul wounds are, then they look and, hundred percent of the time two dates knock wood has been um correlating to how they are being seen so if you're not if you look at it and you especially with the words because they're translated we have to remember that they're translated to another connect from another language so if the words of the wound which i'm going to list in a second don't resonate with me or or with you are confusing it's like what is the difference between this and that mm-hmm. and what does she mean by that or i wasn't rejected by this person yeah Look at the mask and how they are being perceived. Look at that lexicon of the masks and see if there is anything that resonates with you. So without further ado, you want to give it out? (laughs) Let me jump in there, Dr. Sachs. I know you're excited to share these because I I want to expand on that point because this is... I think this is really important for people to hear. I'm going to give a resource here for the, the book that got me into this. And I think you'll explain... Well, you explained it already at the start of the chat how it's a big, it's a it's a start. You need to take this further, which is why we're doing this chat, and which is why you do the workshops that you do, right? Because there is there are extra state uh, extra steps and extra perspectives we need to consider. But the resource, the book I would recommend people start is by uh, Lise Bordeaux, the lady that you're referencing, and the book is called "Heal Your Wounds and Find Your True Self," and it's a uh, I, I recommend it as a starting point for this, and then this podcast and then uh, Dr. Taggy's beautiful workshops it would be the deeper dive. But just to hit on, it's really important to ask the other people. <laughs> it's really important to ask other people about the masks, right? And I'm just cementing what uh, Dr. Taggy said, because what we can often do, and I've seen this in myself, is that we can pretend, right? We can pretend that our mask or our coping mechanism is not a coping mechanism and is more of a oh, this is just me. This is just who I am. This is just how I, uh, this is my belief system, right? And remember that a belief system is fundamentally closed, right? So when you are in it, you are you are not looking outside of it, right? So this is where you sort of have to lovingly push yourself to ask your friends, ask your partner, ask your family, oh, how do I how do I act or maybe read out some of these masks and say, Oh, does any of this resonate? But then I would say the final step would be, but then check in with yourself, right? Check in with that. It's like, Oh, is there a, is there a resonance here? Does that make sense? My friend, does that, do you agree with that? No, I do for sure. I mean, and, and I, I've seen it so many times that even people, when they are reading the wounds, they're being triggered. Yep. And they may be stuck in the, I am not that. <laughs> Why are you calling me that? I mean, the wound itself, when it comes from a soul wound is one thing, but the way they describe it is like, this is how you may be acting. This is how you may be acting to other people. It may be very triggering. So I think having that seen it from other people and coming to it, that going back to the point that this is something that you came to heal. You're ready. This is something that you came to heal. So um, may ease into the resistance. So I yes. think it's inter- I do agree with using your beautiful people who are around you to support you, to help you narrow down the mask. It may be an easier way for you because I've had people too that tell, who have told me I'm all five. And we're going to get that into a second. I've also had other people who have told me that's not me. Like none of them here. This is BS. And that's fine too. Like there's, there's no universal law besides love. But um, once we go through the mask and they're like, oh, oh, now I see it. Now I see yeah. what you're saying. So and, yeah. And, and get the beautiful mirror. And follow the triggers, right? So as, these, yeah. as all this is happening, if you're being triggered at a certain point, that's a breadcrumb, right? Um, 
All right, let's get into it, Dr. Tag, because I want to be mindful of your time today and we have a lot to talk about and I know there's some segments here we need to break down. So let's, I'll let you sort of take the flow here and maybe let's let's do an overview, an outline of the the main the main wounds with their corresponding masks and then I'll jump in accordingly. So go for it. So um, there's five wounds. I'm going to list the five wounds and I'm going to go back into them. So the five wounds, rejection wound, abandonment wound, humiliation wound, betrayal wound, and injustice. So five wounds. Every wound has a mask. So it has that external way that you carry to protect yourself from that wound. Rejection wound, you um, usually tend to wear the mask of the fugitives, meaning that you're fleeing the scene. The uh, abandonment one tends to wear the mask of the addict. The humiliation one tends to be the masochist. The betrayal one tends to be the controller. And the injustice one tends to be the rigid mask. And I'm going to go into, and I can already hear the answers of some questions because I'm going to go into a second and talk the difference between rejection and abandonment, but also rigid and controlling. Can I ask a question already? So, uh, at least, and this sounds like maybe where you've shifted and changed something, which is, I, I love it. And I want to break this down. So Bordeaux explains that abandonment has the, has the mask of dependency or being the dependent and rejection has the mask of withdrawal, but you, you've shifted this to, you said the, explain the ones that you said and, and maybe explain why that you've changed this. Sure. Sure. Um, so the, I use the fugitive instead of withdrawal. Um, because redraw a seems a little bit passive, like you're just redrawing. And what I see that most people are fleeing. I'm also going back to the fact that I'm working with a lot of people with that fight or flight and flee. Yeah. So, um, the fugitive resonates with so many people, then withdraw seems neutral. That's how I, at least I understand it. Also going back to the fact that a lot of her wording are translated. French. Exactly. So um, you can translate the language to the best of your ability. There is things that are some, some subtleties that are sometimes lost in translation. And I like the addict a little bit more than dependency for this. It's, it's that, again, going back maybe to how my brain works with I, I always, when I feel an, an abandonment wound, I always see the dopamine. Or the, I always see that like I need some kind of reward or I need to give you some kind of reward so you don't abandon me. And that to me sounds like an addiction, an addiction to that emotional connection to that person. When dependency could be the same thing, but also dependency tends to narrow people into that relationship de dependency. Um, when I see about addicts, it could be about food. It could be, again, how it manifests itself in health with alcohol, with substance, with working out, with working, work mm. alcoholics, um, because they're trying to be overachievers, whatever it is. So I use the words that I think resonated the most with my work, uh, resonated the most with my patient, but also that to me carried the same essence of the language translation that I felt. And it mm. may be different from another French speaking person, you know, but that's how I personally yeah, I love it. it. That makes sense to me. That uh, and I like the you talking about the fugitive and the idea of the fight or flight. If uh, any mm -hmm. pe any anyone has heard us speak about inner child before, we know that this, especially when you start bringing in the chakras, which we're going to talk about soon, uh, that root center, right? That safety, security, support, which is the balance state, but that's not the state that most of us are in, right? Most of us are in that fight or flight fugitive state. So, yeah, it's a big one. Um, Dr. Taggy, let's, let's do this now. So I want to, I want to be mindful here. If you're listening to this, this is something that this kind of work around the wounds and the masks is not something that you're going to listen to a podcast episode and then be done with, right? I really want this, the intention of this episode is one to just hear more of Dr. Taggy's beautiful voice, but mostly two is so that you use this to dive deeper into yourself. So I want this to be a resource where people can start, but not the solution where you think everything is solved, right? Because that is where a beautiful practitioner, much like myself or Dr. Taggy comes in. So what I'm going to do is 
if you if this is already starting to resonate, reach out to Dr. Taggy, right? Or reach out to myself so we can help you one-on-one for that safety, for that support, for that security. But let's give a, I think what we'll do, Dr. Taggy, maybe let's give one example in from my life of one of the wounds, and then maybe you can explain one in your life and, and then we'll we'll jump from there. Okay. So let me ask you. So I've and I've shared this with you. I've recently acknowledged a a wound of betrayal and uh you know i'm still sort of fine tuning the actual event <laughs> in terms of where that was where that stemmed from and i mostly see it in my mask of control right i see it in my mask of control in many different ways so let me throw it back to you now to maybe explain for people listening maybe what what is a how can a mask of betrayal form itself and then maybe also explain what we can start looking for within the mask of control Ooh. um i love what you just said because here's what i really see with the sense of betrayal with the wound but also with the mask i mean controlling is usually is typical betrayal is almost an easy one people would recognize it in the sense that um, this controlling overachiever trying to make sure everything goes go their way for a couple of reasons because they are usually scared of being betrayed so they have trust issues betrayal to me in my head always go back to the trust there is a problem with trust the trust of the outside so they need to control every single thing this way they are avoiding the risk they have control over the outcome and the expectation but actually what is really hiding is the lack of trust in self and a self-betrayal. Because every single step you feel to control, you actually betraying yourself. And I'm trying to think of an example, but going back to not trusting yourself, you're going to do things that are over-calculated and over-mental coming from an ego place. So you're betraying that voice inside of you that is telling you, go, hey, do this. It's a little murmur. And you're probably not going to be listening to it because you, A, cannot do anything out of faith because you don't trust and because you need to control. So surrendering is going to be such a hard process until you actually learn to, to trust and listen to yourself and let go of the control. So it's tricky for the betrayal wound because their whole purpose is, is trying to not be betrayed by mm. other and the mask they wear end up actually betraying themselves. Yeah. And my question to all of the ret- betrayal wound peeps, um, I always say better than than you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like why yeah. would you, you, you don't ever want to be the one that's betraying yourself. And then when you are betraying, you're not betraying yourself. There is no way anyone else can betray you. Ooh, some uh, some things there that I need to hear, my friend. So thank you for <laughs> thank you for sharing, and I hope that I hope that gave I hope that example gave a bit of clear understanding around that specific kind of wound. I do before you share your example, I do just want to ask you a question around it and how the parents start to factor into this. How the how the parents specifically bring out this wound that ultimately does come back to us, right? As you beautifully said. It's a betrayal of self, but how this can act be activated is in the soul family with the soul contracts with the parents. And this is a really interesting characteristic of this specific betrayal wound that uh, Lise speaks about in her resources. And I want to get your opinion on is the Oedipus, the Oedipus uh, effect, right? And that is the, for people that are new to that, it is the idea that both uh, boys and girls in their in their upbringing have a healthy attraction to their, I think it's their, their main physical care. Yeah. Their Mm -hmm. physical caregiver. So for me, my mom, so we have like a, an attraction and, and this is healthy because it usually ends at one point, but if there was a betrayal or something that occurred with the parents, then this Oedipus uh, effect does not, it re, you know, goes into the unhealthy uh, realm, and this this sort of exacerbates the expression of the betrayal wound. Am I 
Am I making sense? Is that? I think you, you, yeah, you, you, um, there, there was a little bit of confusion there, I think, between the betrayal and the humiliation wound. The yes. humiliation wound is when it's the physical parents, and we're going to get that okay. to the, per, the, patient, the parents that take care of you physically. Yep. Betrayal wound is, that's what Oedipus syn- um, syndrome, uh, the Oedipus uh, syndrome okay. is, is basically, yeah. it's a fact, is basically um, complex. The Oedipus complex is, is basically, it, you are, kind of in love with your opposite parents so it's an opposite sex parent so for example my demographic is mainly girl woman i call it a father wound because that's just what my demographic is but if i had a male patient then i would use it as a mother wound it's the opposite which is if you like greek mythology that's a whole other podcast uh we that's what oedipus complex is is basically you are in love with your opposite the parent with an opposite gender as you so what that plays also in, in the case of betrayal wound is that there is some kind of attraction in there, a healthy attraction that ex- basically reflects to you your, your sense of how you're going to be accepted in the outside, your sense of value. Because also we, without going too deep into this, the betrayal wound is get activated around the teenage years. So usually when there's some of the hormones coming up, when you start having some attraction to either similar sex or opposite sex, but let's, for the sake of this purposes, this purpose, let's say someone is a heterosexual and their mother, um, their mother will be the one that would be carrying that wound and they will be mimicking it. So it's looking into the mother to how I'm going to express myself, for example, mm-hmm. to attract a female mate. And okay. usually it's also around that age when parents become very controlling because of raging hormones and we, mm-hmm. you're not to be trusted. You're not to be trusted because you're not an adult enough. And that's usually when the parent becomes the authority in them, becomes extremely controlling, more so than when they were kids, which is why a lot of why it's the perfect time for that wound to be activated, not appear because it's where it's already there, but activated. And then the mask replicated, it sounds, the mask of control replicated and like, oh, that's, that's a good example of what I should do. That's a good example of what I should do to cover this thing instead of going into it. Uh, I love it. Thank you for explaining that, my friend. And um, just so people are aware, right, uh, both Dr. Taggy and myself, and I'm going to hear her example here in a second, but both Dr. And Taggy, Dr. Taggy and myself, you know, we teach these things, but we are living these things. I, I, I like to express, and I know she does too, that it's one thing to theoretically share these ideologies and these elements and these, and these concepts. But I know for me, the place where I really get to share my love the most is both from personal experience and pain. So I hope that little insight into some of the things I'm moving through really resonates and relates to a lot of you. All right. <clears throat> Dr. Saggy, let's do your example. And then we'll move on to some other questions here. So what is an example of a wound that you've acknowledged in your life and maybe talk about how you spotted it maybe through the, through the mask that you, that other people saw or you saw? Um, I'm, 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 gonna talk, I'm not going to talk about the obvious one. I'm going to talk about one that's actually reading the mask. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> that's me. It was the humiliation one. And I was actually bumped into it. I didn't like that one, but, um, and it's, I didn't think the fact that I didn't like it should have been my hint right there and then, but, uh, humiliation. That's the trigger, wound, right? That's the trigger correct. we were talking about. Yeah. And there is one humiliation wound is basically uh, the mask of it is the masochist. It's basically before you harm me, I'm going to harm myself. Like I'm going to take care of it. <laughs> don't worry. You don't have to do it for me. And usually that comes a lot in a form of self-destruction. And so before life, even if you want to go abroad, before life takes the joy away from me, I, I would do it myself. I take care of it myself. And there is one specific example. I don't know if it's in the book or it but I remember it was directly from Liz Barbeau. So that said, it, the humiliation wound usually will be the one that will make fun of themselves. So you would say compliment to them and they would turn it into something. And this is something that I always thought I took compliments really nicely, but I realized I always have to add something. 
like, oh my God, your hair looks great today. And I would say, oh, I washed it. Thank you. I just washed it. Or like, you know, like I try to not, not just, just embrace the, the, the compliments. And I realized that a lot. People would say like, oh my God, great lecture, or you're such amazing at your job. And I would say, I try, I have my moments. So I'm always trying to deflect. Yeah. And, or save and, the love. Exactly. And yeah. it's like, I'm not receiving it hundred percent. Like it is flattering my ego. And even when I know, I know, but I always need to almost in it deflect as in some, some kind of like fake humility, humility, which I think is a key word, humility to the humiliation wound. Mm. So if you're listening and think you're having some kind of seeking humility or need to be in, in a fake humility to be humble, you may have, we may, my friend, you and I should need to talk. We may be sharing a humiliation, <laughs> humiliation wound. It uh, might be a part of the other reason we're sort of, you know, me and Dr. Taggy for people that I don't think we've shared it too much on the podcast. Dr. Taggy and I are just uh, soul connections here in this lifetime. Uh, we've had a few different soul connections in other lifetimes and it sounds like that might be a reoccurring, feels like, might be a reoccurring uh, healing wound that we are brought together for a particular reason. I uh, love it, my friend. Thank you for sharing. And I think we'll leave it there because I want to. I want to talk about some other questions, but uh, that's a little tidbit of the of the breakdown of the wounds. And I would really encourage you to reach out to Dr. Taggy, go to her workshops, uh, reach out to myself, and we can break these down a bit more specifically. But really feel into them, right? I'm sure as you've been listening, maybe you've been having some triggers already, right? Maybe you've been having some, Ooh, this is, this sounds like me, or this sounds like someone, you know, follow, follow those feelings, right? That in itself can be the start of this beautiful expansion. Let's shift now, my friend, to another question I want to ask around this. And if people have heard us talking about in a child before the chakras before, you may, have heard, you may have heard us refer to the term, the body keeps score. And these wounds are an example, another example of this, how an emotional, energetic, and spiritual uh, challenge within us will also express and display itself within the body, right? And we can, and Lise talks about this in the book, that you can start to spot a certain kind of wound based off how the body has developed. However, this is what I want to get your perspective on. And you, you made this comment to me and it really resonated that we can't fully rely on that because people may have multiple wounds. So explain this, explain this, this, this challenge and maybe how you see a way through this. Yes. Um, uh, it's, this is, I got in so much trouble for this. I remember when I even said it because one of the biggest um, first teaching for this Babo was actually, if you're confused about what sign, what, what wound you have, go to the body, go to the physical body and see how your physical body. And that was like, I remember being even with Maria and be like, no, 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 that doesn't, that makes no sense. And I was already and like a doctor about that. And I was like, this makes no sense. Every person, and this is Liz Bardot's word that has four wounds, four of them, two main one and two secondary one. So my poor little scientific brain could not wrap itself around the facts. How can we have two main ones and can be complete opposite? You know, <laughs> I'm picturing, I'm, I'm, being, I'm picturing like a Frankenstein monster of all the, of all the different wounds expressing itself in the different parts of the body. <laughs> well, Hilton, to be honest, look at me. I have like my, my two bigger ones are humiliation and rejection. And that, what does that mean? That am I either like completely skinny and effaced or I am obese? That, that, that's, and I wasn't either yeah. <laughs> ever in my life besides when I had anorexia, which makes sense for the rejection one. But it, it didn't really click. And I, in, in practice, it didn't click until I took her full um, course when it was actually live. And she did say that with her work, things have been evolving. But she also didn't want to confuse, add more confusion, confusion. Because, again, it is a book and it's not a soul work. It is really to bring awareness. And I think a lot of what she's trying to convey is two main things, getting out 
of the victim mentality, which beautifully I think does through the book. And the other one is to remind you that the book, that the body book, um, keeps score. That everything that is a metaphysical reason to how your body presents itself and the body that you chose to work and your body will change as you are working through the wounds. And sometimes yeah. you will be more in a certain body form, depending on what wound is being activating yeah. or you're working through. In my case, well, like when I shared, when I was very underweight, I think there was a big rejection wound theme there. I mean, quite literally, I was going through a breakup and I think I lost extreme amount of weight and I was very frail looking. Um, so I think there was a big, that activated that. Um, and so but it changed. I can see but it changed. exactly that has changed. And I think the humiliation one may have been always some kind of, uh, and uh, under the radar that it never truly yeah. showed up in my body. But I think that especially that sentence drove me insane. I remember when I learned it, when it says, look by the body, if you are confused. And I remember thinking, look at the masks, if you are yes. confused. Because so, that's a mirror. So I think what's coming up for me here to <clears throat> add to this is it's what's happening here is the difference. And we often get stuck in this, right? And myself included. What, what, it, what, what the thing, the element here that's de displaying itself is the difference between symptomatic and generalized sort of uh, labels and individualized nuanced expression. And we must, we must, we must use a framework to begin, right? So let's use the chakra system, right? The chakra system. There are many themes that, as a collective, you can start, you know, ex connecting to each individual person, right? The root and the safety, the support, the security, the heart with the giving and receiving of love. But we must be willing to use that general framework and go deeper into our unique individualized expression, not just as a, as a static individual, but also as a static individual moving throughout time and space. So being aware that yes, the body does keep score, but it keeps score as an ever evolving soul that's having constant triggers and interactions. So for example, you're, you might, as you said, have a wound, that does express itself through the body, but something will shift, right? And based off the work that you're doing, another wound might come up. And if you've narrowed your perspective into, oh no, my body has been X amount of years expressing X amount this wound, then now I can't do this other thing. Well, it can, right? Because we are ever evolving and ever changing. So does that resonate, my friend? Is that sort of, I, that's what I'm picking up from this. Yes. And uh, I think I, I call it a flavor. I think the best analogy that, that I come to mind for me is like you can have a flavor of a country. If I'm going to go to Morocco or Australia or France or Switzerland, I have a flavor of how it's, if you have never been, you may open and Google and see some images. Your experience of that country may be completely different. If you go to if you go to Cannes, it's gonna be very different from someone who went to Paris. If you go to Marrakesh, it's gonna be very different from someone who went to Sahara. It'd be very different if you go to, and it's the same thing. Your experience of that trip will be extremely, extremely unique. Yeah. And I think what I want us, and I think this is a lot of what my work mission is, is remembering the holistic yeah. and approach to things yeah. there is so many reasons why you may be carrying weight for example in a certain area yeah. the wound being part of them i mean there is the body there is the yeah. there is the entities there yeah. is the there is so many Parasites, things Parasites, the toxins Correct. the hormones the yeah, yeah. they're and they're all intertwined they're yeah. not they are not disconnected but going back to holistic approach and going back to the individualist approach, which I truly like, I'm looking in my life and looking at my work that I do, I think that one of the things that comes very naturally to me is that zooming in and zooming out. This is something that I, comes to me easily to zoom in and zoom out and zoom in and zoom out all the time in my yeah. work. That helps me that anytime someone zooms me out too much or zooms me in, it feels like the, the picture is blurry yeah. and it annoys me very quickly. <laughs> so yeah. that's usually me. 
I love it. And I think this is a, I'm happy you added in that holistic point. This is now a, cause I think a lot of us don't, we might practically very have the understanding of the hormones or the food that we're consuming or our parasite and fungal imbalance. Now we have a, now this, what we've been talking about today is a very practical, hopefully easily understandable spiritual and energetic tool that we can add into the, into the conversation to now, you know, maybe pad out the rest of the image that you might be having challenges with. Right. Let's, Dr. Taggy, let's shift now to, I want to bring in the chakra system and I'm wondering how you feel the chakras play a role within this, right? I can see your, your body moving and, and dancing here. So I can, there's some things coming up. I feel it. What, how does the, if people have been listening to this show for a while, listening to us for a while, we speak about the chakra system a lot. So in your opinion, how does the, this energetic framework add into the soul wounds that we've been talking about? So I was like, I was smiling because the example that came to mind is one I think of your favorite examples is the difference between shame and guilt. And I'm going to, I'm going to start that right there. So if you read the book or if you're listening to us, the time when it's activating, when I think a wound is activated is a good indication of what kind of chakra we're talking about. If you have um, learned, speak, heard us speak or took our chakra course, we talk in the chakra course about how every chakra is more active during a specific time or a different time in our life. So I'm going to talk about shame and guilt because, for example, that's what has helped me. So Liz Babo doesn't talk about the chakra work. But when I was trying to see how does that fit holistically with all of my tools, rejection and abandonment. A lot of people actually confuse the two. Um, and I'm just going to give people, it doesn't mean you were rejected. It means that you were scared of being rejected. Rejection, there is something wrong with me. Story, the story right. we told ourselves. Yes, exactly. Well, it's not. It's it's my existence. Rejection is a pretty deep one. It's like my existence is a problem, meaning that it's usually even before you, before your birth. It's the one that's, and I like I knew the rejection one right away. That was so easy because my incarnation was not easy because I knew I didn't want to be here. So part of this, I mean, I knew I I, I know I wanted to be here, but I didn't. My incarnation was hard in the sense like. And I felt it in the sense that I don't want to be here. My existence is the problem. This is something wrong with who you are. This is pure root chakra. When, when Harrison tells the difference between shame and guilt in a room, we're talking about shame being from that root chakra perspective. Abandonment is I don't want you to leave me because of something I did, which is usually more of what a guilt is. Guilt, there is something wrong with what something I did. Shame, there is something wrong with what something I am. And guilt tends to be a little bit more of that sequel, a little bit higher up, or maybe more of um, solar plexus. Mm. So there is an action that I did, and that's usually where the abandonment wound would get activated. So oh, there is, of course, the holistic approach. Which one is the most primary one for you? Which one, one, which one is coming up first? But for those two, it's so clear that this one, that the first one is truly roots based, yeah. and with abandonment may have some of the other flavors. Betrayal, in your case, Harrison, will be you can feel that solar yeah. plexus, and yeah. so it, and throat yeah, too. it will be. Yes, exactly. So it will be some of that. I mean, injustice about with rigidity, which is different from being controlling. It's um, it will be almost again that lack of trust, and you're not taking actions from your heart. So yeah. it's more higher up, and injustice will be more heart chakra, and betrayal, which is controlling, will be more outside, and it will be more of that solar plexus. People uh, can't didn't hear it, but I was. <laughs> it's funny as, as Dr. Taki was talking about the physical locations of these wounds, <laughs> I was clearing my throat. I was like, what's going on here? I was like, oh, that's what's going on. She's explaining, she's explaining the physical, the, well, you're explaining the chakra energetic connection, but as we all know, the, these chakra energy centers, not just have an age of development, but they have a physical locality within the system, right? So that's the other 
in my opinion, that's the other side of how we can now sort of slap on the soul wounds and everything we've been talking about to the chakra system is also their resonance within the physical body at large, right? So the, the rejection, the guilt and the shame, the solar plexus, also ask yourself the question, what is happening physically within those areas, right? If I'm, if I'm feeling that guilt within that sacral space, how is my womb health right now, right? How is my relationship with my PCOS challenge? How is my relationship with my, you know, my, my, my sexual function, my erections, my, my menstruation, you know, these, these are other little, as we, as Dr. Taggy highlighted previously, this is the holistic connection here that both the soul wounds and the chakra framework really pad out with these sort of energetic and soul uh, sides of it all, right? Let's a question now that's coming up that I want to ask you, Dr. Taggy. How does someone, where does someone start with this, right? So we've <laughs> we've got given uh, a lot of examples and and we've explained certain elements. I'm trying. I'm tuning into the audience listening, and I can feel. A lot of people resonating and maybe some dots are being put together in your practice. And I know you have workshops too, but maybe I just speak to your one-on-one so you can highlight this. If someone comes to you and says, Hey, Dr. Taggy, I have a, I have a wound of abandonment that I've highlighted. Or I have a wound of betrayal that I've highlighted. Where do you start? Do you start with their physical symptom? Do you start with their, their, their chakra, expression do you start with their inner child trauma i have a feeling i know what you're going to say but what comes up when i ask this question well i it's actually the, regardless of what someone comes to me for some people may know me for x y and z um unless you are a patient in my practice who strictly want to work on physical if you are someone who wants for this holistic approach and come to me for um over the phone or over Zoom, I always start everyone on the root cause analysis, which is an, an hour and a half appointment. And basically, I that's what I do. I desiccate, I play surgeon. It's basically just put everything out and let's see where you want us to start. And I would say to anyone that are listening, start with the urge. Start with the urges. I, and this is a true story, it happened very recently. Someone has reached out to me and their urge, they're, they're so interested in entities. They're so interested in that. And I could feel it. I could feel it that I said, I gave them a referral to someone. And I said, go, she does amazing work and come back. But start with the urge. And I may have a plan for you being like, well, I want to put more light into you. I want to do this. But you're... If you're listening to us, if you're listening to this podcast, you have an intuition. You know you are a soul in a human, in a physical experience. Listen to the urge. And even if it doesn't fit the order, it doesn't fit the steps. So I start with people and I think a lot of what I do in the first session is, yes, I'm noting, writing down what you're saying. And yes, all of that. But I'm really feeling your energy. And sometimes at, at some point in the camera, your face would change when you're going to talk mm-hmm. about something. I would have confirmations in my body when you talk about a certain thing. And I have a whole plan that I know you want to come here and talk to me about the sexual trauma that happened when you were three. And because you want this because of, um, you know, some physical symptom or whatever it is. And in that hour, in that discussion, I'm really feeling into the things that. You're excited about. Yeah, there is a momentum. There is a life momentum behind. That's what I'm looking for. Mm. I'm looking for that life momentum. And usually when I reflect it back to the patient, they have that like, oh, and it's almost like almost like a relief. It really felt yeah. like a relief to her. Like I think part of her in her head was like, and she's like crazy and let me do it. And then when I when I shared back like, hey, contact this person, do it. She almost felt like, Oh my God, like, thank you because I, I felt it. So if you are having a nudge, yeah. If you're having a nudge and sometimes having someone putting it 
and you can see the big picture that that conversation with someone that can see the big picture for you that can be that lighthouse for you that lights on lights up the whole journey and you can see it's like oh now the next steps make sense but if you're too stuck on that conversation right there and you're not seeing the next step which is the one you want to take sometimes it can be again like not seeing the big picture stuff so this is how I know my friend, and I want to expand this out to people listening. This, in my opinion, is a characteristic, and you've said this to me before, and I'm gonna I'm gonna boomerang it right back at you, of a practitioner who's doing their job right, because what you just highlighted is you, and you said it, you are reflecting back what that individual soul and higher self and deepest expression needs right now in this moment, right? That is what that excitement is, right? That is what that urge is. It, it may not be the end result. It may not be the end thing, but it's the soul speaking through the individual saying that, Hey, this is what is needed right now. This is the one step we need to take. And a lot of us, and I want to be clear with this, we can learn to listen to that. We can, as an individual, we can learn to, go straight to that directly, but most of us can't. And that's okay. That is what beautiful practitioners out in the world, like Dr. Tag, like myself, like people that you might've connected to are there for, right? They're, they're there to walk you home, right? They're there as Dr. Taggy would say, to hold up the beautiful smudge free mirror to reflect back into your heart, to help you see and feel what is needed. Right. And Dr. Taggy, this actually, <laughs> this flows beautifully into the last question I want to sort of speak to you here with is I want to take it down right down the woo rabbit hole, spiritual rabbit hole here, because that is really what the base of this is, right? It's coming from a deep, powerful spiritual place. It's coming from that spiritual being, having a human experience. And the question I want to ask you is I would, I would encourage people to go back and listen to the episode with Shireen, where we talked about the life between lives and a big part of these soul wounds, that is where this planning is done, right? It's done in the in between the incarnations when we are a soul, when we're either resting, we're we're assessing, and we're planning the life to come. We're picking our soul family, we're picking the individual souls with the wounds that we need both for our expansion and their expansion. My question for you, Dr. Taggy, is what is that expansion for? Right? Why are uh, why do we have those wounds? Why is that planning necessary? Why do we go through these things? Why do I, you know, in that life between lives, pick my mom as the soul that she is with the with the wounds that she has, so I can go through this? What what's the goal here, in your opinion? I mean, my, there is a sentence that you've said, I uh, heard you say a lot, which is walking each other back home or by, back to love, to this space of love. And I think it's going back to this idea of, again, zooming out and zooming in. Because to me, zooming out, the big picture, we are all made of love. Our home is love. And the idea of remembering that, going to that. I don't like the word higher dimension. There is something about, that word that makes people think there's a hierarchy. Yeah, hierarchy. In the yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's like, no. But uh, the, the, and there is also about the individual that's zooming in, that you are an individual. It's not because you're part of that oneness that you have nothing, something very unique to you. So I think the purpose of all of this, at least to me, is to coming back to that conclusion that we are made of love and we are surrounded by love. And every lifetime that we choose, again, we choose, we have decided how many lifetimes we want to do, what is, it's whatever you think is necessary for your own, I won't call it growth, but for your own love, for your own remembering that state of vibrating at that, that frequency that is very unique, not just to you, but to the universe and source that you live in. The other thing is like, I always say there's things that are 
it's bigger than when you think it's meaning bigger than this lifetime. And there is some things that you may not understand today that may would make no sense, but I was just thinking about planet earth, for example, and, you know, without getting too in the alien world. And, and I think you did a Shireen um, episode with Shireen about that. And I was just thinking like, why, why would I do that? Why would I come into planet earth? And if there was yeah. some kind of evolution needed for the universe, for this law of frequency that we're talking about. And part of this, we are just one little particle that is moving into playing a bigger momentum yeah, in, this higher, in, this, in this collective frequency. We may now, right now, know, again, the big picture, but we can think all can feel it. Yep. Yeah, that's the, that's the part that resonates with me the most is the, the, the individual expression that is ultimately a part of an interconnected collective. And that interconnected collective also has a mission. And uh, yeah, the, I think this is another wor word, so much like you have that resistance around uh, the next dimension, I, there's resistance around the word ascension for me. And I think ascension is thrown around a lot in the spiritual community, but I think where we can apply it to this point now is that I don't ascend or come back to the oneness or God consciousness, collect whatever you want to call it. I don't ascend as, as the individual soul that is Harrison or Dr. Taggy doesn't ascend as the individual soul that she is. We ascend together. We can't ascend individually. We're apart. In, we're intrinsically apart, whether we're consciously aware of it or not, we are part of a group consciousness. And I agree. I think the ultimate, one of the ultimate roles of our soul wounds and uh, the soul contracts and the lessons we have are a little jigsaw puzzle, a part of a bigger, a bigger expansion or a bigger ascension. Let's use the earth right now. I'll, I'll make it very practical to understand much like we have a soul. The earth has a soul too, and we're connected to her. And she has an evolution. She has a plan. So just that one example, me working through my soul wounds, Dr. Taggy working through her soul wounds helps Mother Earth expand along her journey. Does that, does that resonate, my friend? Oh, 100%. Yeah, totally. I think, that's, I think it would make a lot, of, a lot of our soul purpose a little bit easier because a lot of people may think, well, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I have no intention. I could have, I could have stayed with the big guy whatever the big guy is i have no intention of coming back and when you think you see it a little bit more as a how you fit in individually how your own little journey fits in in that collective i think it makes it less lonely i think that's a lot of people what they are scared of is that loneliness in the pain i don't think it's the pain that's what scares us the loneliness in it and always knowing that whatever pain you may have to challenges that you may have to experience to grow that you're not alone in it. That we, it's a collective love and collective growth and you're definitely not alone in this journey. Beautifully said, my friend. Well, I love you very much, Dr. Taggy. I know I want to let you go frolic in the, in the summer heat and, and weather with your beautiful family. Before I let you do that, I want to give you a bit of space now to share you know, if you uh, listeners out there in the podcast world, if you've connected to this topic and you want to go a little bit deeper, uh, realize that Dr. Taggy is a beautiful practitioner within this world in the work that she does. And I know my friend, you have monthly workshops where people can sign up and go deep into these topics today. So uh, I'd love for you to share anything you want to share around this that you think can help people more. Correct. Uh, if you have heard, if you listen to this and you that resonated with you and you want to know more about the soul wounds, I already have a workshop that was done about a month ago that is recorded. It goes in details into every single soul wound, how it relates to which parent and in your body and the symptoms that come with it. And I help you narrow down uh, which main ones you have. And every month we go through a healing session. We just had our beautiful rejection one done. We have the next one coming up for abandonment. It's the first Sunday, first Saturday of every month. 
the first Saturday of every month. And if you are in, if you're interested, just reach out to me or send me a message in my website, drshaggy.com, and you'll be added to my mailing list. And this way you'll be able to be notified. But I'd love to have you there and help you in your journey to keep on growing. I think I'm going to have to come to one uh, soon, my friend, and just experience. We've done so much, so many, so much of this work together that I haven't actually had uh, a time to be a part of these workshops. So I'd love to come in and tune into one because I think, like I said, that I'd betrayal. When when's the betrayal one? When's the next betrayal wound? Is that? Yeah, I think I I am. Let me double check, but I think yeah. it's the June one. Yeah, Ooh. I think it's the third one. I think it's the June one. Let me double check, but I think it's the Probably. yeah because I'm doing them. I'm doing them in order. It's such an order in my mind, and I think it's the June one. So right with your birthday, I think it's not yeah. a coincidence. No, no. As soon as you said, I was like, oh, of course it is. Uh, all right, my friend. Thank you for being here. Thank you for spending time with me, beautiful listeners out there in the podcast world. Thank you for bringing us your ears, your heart, your energy. Uh, Both Dr. Taggy and I love you very much. We wish you a wonderful evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And we'll catch you next time here on the Cosmic Love Antenna. Before we finish, make sure you share this episode with someone that you love very much so you can give them some value. But with that, bye everyone. Thank you for listening to the Cosmic Love Antenna podcast. We hope you enjoyed. Be sure to follow Harrison on Instagram, Twitter, and Clubhouse at Harrison Ma. That's Harrison, M-E-A-G-H-E-R.